Shake Squad. If you want to get yourself an ultimate gaming PC or you want to start a YouTube and streaming career, check out GrimesTechnology.com. Along with custom built PCs and gaming monitors, they also have streaming gear such as capture cards, condenser mics, and green screens and more. Use code SHAKES at checkout. Yo, what's going on Shake Squad? Back at you with another Black Ops 4 video and I get asked all the time whether it's a live stream or whether it's people I'm playing with, what settings I run. Whether it's my sensitivity, whether it's my ADS sensitivity, whether it's my button layout, you name it. I get asked all the time what my uh, settings are in Black Ops 4. So I'm gonna make a video today, and in my opinion, these are the best settings to use, whether you're an average player or an advanced player in Black Ops 4, and these are my setups that I use. But before we get started, I wanna give a shout out to the Shake Squad, Albino Viper, with the comment down. And if you guys want your comment shown in the next video, all you guys need to do is leave a comment in this video, just Tell me in the comment section, guys, what is the most OP weapon in the game right now? And also, guys, if you can like this video, let's see if we can get 100 likes on this video. It literally takes two seconds to like the video, so let's go ahead and get a little like spike going on. And without further ado, let's get straight into the settings. All right, starting off with look inversion. There's only one person that I know that plays on inverted for their view pitch. Guys, if you guys can do it, by all means, go for it. I, you know, 99.3% of the players, if I had to guess, that was a random number, but if I had to guess, 99.3% of the players play on a standard look inversion. That's what I play on, but if you want to play inverted, go ahead and play on inverted. Now let's talk about the sensitivity. There are two sensitivities in this game. We got the horizontal and we got the vertical. I play on an eight horizontal and a nine vertical. I am actually going to drop an in-depth video on what sensitivity you guys should be playing on. So look for that in the next upcoming days. Now the ADS sensitivity, I play on a 125, and the high zoom sensitivity, I play on a 0.75. Now let's go to the aim and target assist. You want to keep these on. Now the only time that you want to keep them off is if you're doing a special video for your, you know, like your YouTube channel, or if you are playing keyboard and mouse, uh, you want to keep them on. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's common sense. Keep them on. Controller vibration. Turn that off. I have mine off. Whenever I have it on, it messes up with my aim. Uh, I don't know how and I don't know why, but it messes up my aim to the point where I literally go off aim, off topic, off. It's it's horrible. Make sure you guys keep the controller vibra vib vibration off. The sprint cancels reload. You want to keep that off. Basically, whenever you whenever you try and reload and you sp sprint. It's going to pretty much cancel it and you're not going to be able to reload. So make sure you guys keep that off unless you're experienced with it. Auto mantle, you want to keep that off because pretty much you're going to be you're going to mantle on top of things without even knowing it, without even pressing the jump button. It's horrible. Keep that off. Auto sprint, I literally have never used this. I don't even think this was an option in any other Call of Duty, but basically it says when enabled, double click in the sprint button will make you automatically begin sprinting. So you literally have to double click your sprint button and I think hold it just to auto sprint when you can just go like this. That's all you need to do. So turn that off. Now, the stick layout. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people have it on default. I'm pretty sure South, uh, South, um, South Paul is for left hand. Um, I don't know too much about South Paul Legacy and Legacy South Paul. Uh, I keep mine on default. Like I said, most people will probably keep theirs on default. Now the button layout. The button layout is very important. Now I cannot stress this enough. For those of you who do not have a custom controller, whether it's a scuff, whether it's the new Astro controller, I use a Battle Beaver controller. 
basically whatever you don't have buttons or paddles on the back go to stick and move your ultimate goal is you want to implement a jump shot into your game you want your movement to be on point and what stick and move will do is it'll basically um, change your right thumb stick to the jump so all you have to do is press in on your right thumb stick aim and shoot without moving your thumb off of the thumb stick to press X or a if you're on Xbox you stick and move I'm gonna be on tactical because I actually have one of those custom controllers so I um, like to slide with my uh, right thumb stick and jump with the back buttons but if you guys don't have a custom controller go ahead and put on stick and move you're gonna be able to jump shot a lot easier and you're not going to be able you're not you're not going to have to move your right thumb off of the right thumb stick now this uh, basically swaps your L2 and R2 with R1 and L1 um, the only time I suggest doing this is if you're playing on a default controller most of the custom controllers out there whether it is scuff whether it is a battle beaver you guys we, we have hair triggers we have trigger stops and pretty much I'll show you um, if you Look how like not far in that goes. Look how that stops. Now I don't need to flip it, but like I said, if you are using a default controller or a controller that does not use trigger stops or trigger hairs or whatever you want to call them, change it to flipped. It'll make your trigger finger a lot better and you won't have to press all the way down on your triggers. Instead, just move your fingers up here to L1 and R1 and it's an easy fix. Now going to brightness, going in the graphics section, uh, brightness, you want to keep it at 20, 30, or 40 percent. Anything under it, it's too dark. Anything over 40%, it's too light. I like to keep mine right at 20%. I still see the colors, the maps are still vibrant, and I still get that, I still get that light. You know, that that light, that little I still get the light of the map, the light of the players. I still get the good reflection. Keep it on 20%. Um, colorblind mode, I keep mine off. Um, I don't know anything about this. I don't even, I, I probably, honestly, I can't even pronounce these words. I don't know if I'm stupid, but I just keep mine off. The player name indicator, I keep my full name. I have, I've tried icon only. I did not like it. I, I just keep it on full name. The split screen orientation, I never play on split screen, so I don't even care. Um, now the safe area in the preview, you have to change this in your PlayStation settings. So let's go ahead and let's get right into that. All right, so we're in settings, and what you want to do is you want to go all the way down huh, to sound and screen, and from here you go to display area settings, and what you want is you want to keep your screen all the way to all the way where you can't go anymore. So if you bring it down like this, and what this is going to do is it's going to bring the mini map and everything in the game closer, so you don't have to stray your eyes away too much where you're going back and forth so you're going to be able to see everything with just like a I don't know if you can see my eyes, but you're, you're just going to be able to see everything within an inch apart you don't want to go like this because that's going to keep the that's going to keep your HUD and the fog of war all the way up there and bring it all the way down closer to you all right moving into the audio settings <laughs> Sorry. Moving into the audio settings, guys. Your master volume, um, you want to keep this at 10. I keep mine at 10. I don't, I have not moved it at all. So for the safe bet, keep it at 10. Your audio presets, I find that super crunch and headphones work the best, especially if you have a decent to really good headset. I keep mine at super crunch, but like I said, headphones work as good too, but I mean, I just keep mine at super crunch. Subtitles, I keep mine on only because in my personal preference and my experience, when I'm focused in the game, I'm not here, I'm, I can't really hear the voices because I'm too focused on the screen. So sometimes when the enemy calls like a UAV or an attack chopper, I, I don't hear it. 
I and I stray away because I'm too focused on the game. But for some reason, when I keep subtitles on, I see it because I'm already looking and I'm already focused on the screen, if that makes sense. Now, your voice volume, I keep mine at seven. I feel anything over seven is too overkill for me, and anything under like five is too low. So I keep mine at seven. The music volume, I can't stand music in the game. I keep mine at zero. If you guys remember in World War II last year, when the game was about to end, we had like the most epic, like, battlefield music and that threw me off so many times so finally I just said screw it I'm going to put the music volume all the way down. The team chat voice volume, I keep mine at 10. Um, and the sound effects volume, I keep mine at 8. Like I said, anything over 8, I feel like it's overkill. And guys, this all this audio stuff is different than the controls. All this audio stuff is, you know, really down to personal preference. Uh, it all depends on what headset you're using. Um, so sound effects, I keep mine at eight. The cinematics volume, I keep mine at seven, only because I, like I said, from like I said, with the voice volume and the sound effect volume, anything over seven, I feel for me is overkill. Um, multiplayer dialogue, I don't really know what this does for specialists. Does not affect call. I, whatever. I keep. I I just keep mine on. Um, so you know what. You know what? It's when the specialists are calling out their specialists, and if they get their specialists, they'll say, you know, I got a smoke grenade. That's what that is. I mean, it's personal preference. Controller sound. I keep mine off. Now, the reason I keep mine off is because I don't want to hear two thing, two of the same things, two of the same sounds at the same time. So if I'm already hearing it out of my headset, I don't want to hear any background noise coming from my controller. So pretty self-explanatory, keep that off. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Like I said, these are my settings, and I believe... I truly believe that these settings are awesome. I truly believe they will work for you. They will work for the average player, the advanced player, everyone out there. So give these settings a try. Don't forget to drop a comment down in the comment section to be featured in the video. And for the love of God, like the video, guys. If you guys are new, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. With that, we'll see you in the next one.